Hello everyone, welcome to week 3 lecture videos. In this week we will be covering two chapters, chapter 3 and chapter 4. Chapter 3 deals with valuing bonds and chapter 4 involves valuing stocks. So we start with chapter 3, valuing bonds. A small background first of all. Investment in new plant and equipment requires money, often a lot of money. Sometimes farms can retain and accumulate earnings to cover the cost of this investment, but often they need to raise extra cash from investors. If they choose not to sell additional shares of common stocks, the cash has to come from borrowing. If cash is needed for only a short while, farms may borrow from a bank. If they need cash for long-term investments, they generally issue bonds which are simply long-term loans. Companies are not the only bond issuers. Municipalities also raise money by selling bonds. So do national governments. There is always some risk that a company or municipality will not be able to come up with the cash to repay its bonds, but investors in government bonds can generally be confident that the promised payments will be made in full and on time. So in this chapter, we start our analysis of bond market by looking at the valuation of bonds and uh, the interest rates. We should not confuse the interest rate with the cost of capital for a corporation. The projects that companies undertake are almost invariably risky and investors demand higher prospective returns from this project than from sale of government bonds. The bond markets are typically so more sophisticated compared to stock markets. Bond traders make massive trades motivated by tiny price discrepancies. Uh, this book is not for professional bond traders, but if you are to be involved in managing the company's debt, you will have to get beyond the simple mechanics of bond valuation. Financial managers need to understand the bond pages in the financial press and know what bond dealers mean when they quote spot rates or yield to maturity. They must realize why short-term rates are usually lower than long-term rates and why the long-term bonds prices are more sensitive to fluctuation of interest rates. They can distinguish real interest rates and nominal rates and anticipate how future inflation rate can affect interest rates. So these are basically the focus in this chapter. So in this chapter, we will learn how we value a bond. That's the main focus of this chapter. We will see the relationship between bond prices and interest rate. We will discuss term structure of interest rates. And also we will discuss the relationship between real and nominal interest rates. First of all, these are the terminologies we will be using throughout this chapter. So first is bond. As I previously mentioned that bond is uh, similar to long-term loans. Farm raises long-term loans by issuing bonds. So farms sell bonds to investors. Uh, investor buy this bond by committing funds to farms. And bonds raise these funds by promising interest and principal to be paid back on time. Face value is the amount that farms promises to pay at the maturity of a bond. Face value is also known as par value or principal value. Coupon, bonds generally carry a, an, a specific interest payment and that's called coupon. For example, if uh, a bond has a face value of $1,000 and its interest rate is 10%, then coupon payment will be $100 a year. So this $100 is a coupon payment. Coupon rate is the specific interest rate that is quoted on a bond when it is issued. For example, a bond is issued with a coupon rate of 10%. And if bonds 
par value is $1,000, then a 10% interest on this $1,000 will be paid every year until the maturity of the bond. Now, when we find out the value of a bond, the concept of finding the value of a bond is very similar to finding the present value. So what we do is, we find out the present value of all the cash flows associated with a bond. Now, you understand that bond generates two types of cash flows. One is periodic interest, another is the principal value to be paid back at the maturity. So to find out the value of a bond, we find out the present value of these interest payments and the principal value. And to find out present value, you know from chapter two that we need a discount rate, which is the cost of capital or the required rate of return of investor. We need to be clear that this discount rate is not the specific coupon rate on the bond. As I already mentioned, that coupon rate is the specific interest rate on the bond. On the other hand, discount rate that we use to discount the cash flows of a bond is the required rate of return of the investor on similar type of bond. So how do we find out the value of a bond? As I already mentioned, the value of a bond is the present value of interest plus present value of principal. So you can see this is the value of a bond. This is the periodic coupon payment. We find out the present value by discounting them one plus R, which is the discount rate. And also at the maturity, we get the par value. And that is discounted to get the present value. So look at this example. In October 2014, you purchase 100 euros of bonds in France, which pay a 4.25% coupon every year. If the bond match year in 2018 and the YTM, is 15%, what's the value of the bond? So here you need to differentiate between the coupon rate and the discount rate. You can see 4.25% is the coupon every year. That means this is the specific interest that will be paid on the bond. On the other hand, YTM or the discount rate or the rate of return an investor require from this bond is this 0.15%. So these will be used to find out the present value. So here is the present value. You can see 4.25% on $100 bond. So coupon payment will be 4.25 every year. In the last year, it will be coupon plus the principal, which is $100. So it's 104.25. And we discount them using the discount rate, which is 0.15%. And as we sum them up, we get 116.34 euros. So this is the present value of the cash flows to be generated by the bond. So this is the value of the bond. Okay. Now, one thing you need to understand that you can see that coupon rate is 4.25% and the required rate of return is 0.15%. Uh, so when a bond offers a coupon rate higher than the required rate of return, the bond usually sold at a price higher than its par value. So you can see that present value of a bond can be calculated in using a shortcut, which is periodic coupon multiplied by the present value annuity factor, because you can see that the interest payment of the bond is an annuity payment. It pays equal amount every period at a regular interval. So this is the coupon payment from our previous example. And this is the present value annuity formula. Now, this $100, this is important to realize that this is coupon payment. So this is only the annuity formula. That's why we multiply it by the annuity factor. However, $100, that's a principal amount, comes at the maturity. That's not an, an part of annuity payment. This is a lump sum payment. That means a single amount. That's why we use the simple present value formula, $100 divided by 1 plus R power T. So this is the present value of the principal payment, and this is the present value of the coupon payment. As we sum these two, we get the present value of the bond. Here is another example, very similar one. 
If today is October 1, 2015, what's the value of the following bond? An IBM bond pays 115 every September 30 for five years. In September 2020, it pays an additional $1,000 and retires the bond. The bond is rated AAA with a YTM of 7.5%. So once again, it's very straightforward. 115 is the coupon payment every year until year five. But in year five, you get an additional thousand dollar, which is the, the principal value or the maturity value, and we discount them using the required rate of return, which is 7.5 percent. And as we sum them up, we get the value of the bond. Now, instead of calculating the present value in this way, we can use the formula that we have seen previously. That's 115 is a coupon payment. We can multiply it with the present value annuity factor and we can find out the present value of $1,000 and we can sum them up. We should get the same result. So what's the price of a 7.25% annual coupon bond with $1,000 face value which matches in three years assume a required rate of return of 0.35%. So once again, the very similar example. We have a lot of examples here, and this will help you practice these problems. So 7.25% is the annual coupon bond, and 1,000 is the face value. So as you calculate 7.25% on 1,000, it's 725 and we discount them by the required rate of return. Once again, last year, you have the coupon plus the face value, and as you sum them up, you get the value of the bond. Now, in uh, our discussion the so far, the examples that we have seen, every time we have seen the bonds are paying annual interest. That means interests are paid once annually. However, it does not necessarily mean that bonds always pay annual interest. Sometimes bonds may pay semi-annual interest. In that case, we need to consider semi-annual periods and also the number of periods, I mean T, should be the number of years multiplied by 2. Okay, let's see an example. In November 2014, you purchase a three-year U.S. government bond. The bond has an annual coupon payment of 4.25%. You can see it's 4.25%. It's annual coupon payment paid semi-annually. This is important. This is annual coupon payment and paid semi-annually. So it means that uh, interest is paid twice in a year. And if investor demand a 0.965% annual return, what is the price of the bond? So interestingly, what we need to do now, this is annual payment, but since it's paid semi-annually, we need to find out semi-annual payment. So you can see, uh, if we assume that it's a $1,000 bond and 4.25% is the annual payment, so 1000 4.25 should be $40.5, which should be the annual payment. Am I right? Okay. So 40.5 should be the annual payment. Now, since it's paid semi-annually, so semi-annual payment should be 42.5 divided by 2. So it should be 21.25. That's the semi-annual payment. So you can see 21.25 is the semi-annual payment for uh, every six months, okay? The next point is the required rate of return is 0.965%. So once again, it's annual return, 0.965%. This is annual return. Well, since we are using semi-annual payment, we also need to use semi-annual discount rate. So 0.965 should be divided by two, which should be 0.4 eight two five percent since it is percent we add two zeros uh, when we calculate one plus r and last point is you can see that it's a three-year bond and we are using six so one two three four five six because it's a three-year bond semi-annual payment so there should be six periods okay so this is semi-annual payment this is semi-annual discount rate and Six is the number of semi-annual periods. But the conceptually, 
it is same present value of all interest plus present value of principal and the value of the bond is 1096.90 okay once again you can see that since the interest rate I mean the coupon rate is higher than the required rate of return bonds value is greater than the face value which is supposed to be $1,000 that means bond is sold at a price higher than the face value so that's the end of our discussion on valuing bond please watch the next videos uh, for a discussion on the other topics of this chapter thank you